I think the universe is absolutely and utterly giving. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're gonna get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist, I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out? Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. That's what you deserve, you're a fucking loser. Because if you actually wanted it, and you actually tried, you'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. You want a fucking Ferrari, you can have it. You want that bitch, you can have her. You can have anything you want on the planet. There's not a girl I look at that I want that I can't have. Not one. That's my reality. There's not a car I can't have. There's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have at a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. Like I've, I've achieved this amazing life and I've tried very, very hard, but it could have been harder. I mean, was it that hard? About 86% hard. It wasn't 100% hard. Why? Because the competition's zero. Everyone is a fucking loser. It's amazing to me. Everyone's a loser. I can say to somebody, listen, I'll make you a millionaire. Do this. Oh yeah, but you know, the kids are home from school now. <laughs> That's it. They're done. And then they'll sit and go, oh, I really wish I had some money. You are a loser. I will sit here on this podcast. People will listen to me for hours. And I will say, listen, I have hundreds of millions of dollars and I will teach you how to make money. CobraTake.com, I have a school, university, designed specifically to teach you how to make money. I clearly know how to make money. You clearly like what I say. You obviously believe I'm intelligent and integral and I won't lie to you. And still, a whole bunch of people will sit there and go, hmm, yeah, anyway, next video. And then they'll say, can't afford a Ferrari and wonder why. Like they'll be confused in their minds how they didn't end up getting what they want. Cause you're a fucking loser. Lo that's why. And, and the majority of people are losers. And this is goes back to why when we were saying earlier how I know the elites view us. Because I'm from a council estate in Luton, a single parent household. And I've only been rich 10 years or so. And I despise losers. So imagine you're a billionaire born into a family, a lineage which has controlled Earth for hundreds of years. Imagine how much they despise us. Do you think they give a fuck about putting a bullet in me? Do you think they're gonna have any sleep at night missed? Do you think they give a solitary fuck about you missing your fucking parents' funeral because of the common cold? They don't give a solitary shit. Why would they? Because I already know how I feel when I listen to losers complain. Because this is what happens at a certain level of competence and power. You just get to a point where you're like, I'm tired of hearing your fucking excuses. That's bullshit. And you become to a degree, yeah, cold and psychopathic. It's true. That's what happens. And I get it all the time. I get thousands of emails a day. Everyone I grew up with, people I know, I get it all the time. They'll message me, hey man, you know, I'm just unlucky. You are not unlucky. You are a lazy fucking loser. That's, that's, you are not unlucky. You are breathing. You're lucky. The unlucky ones are gone. You're alive and you are a lazy loser. So a loser is anybody who does not have everything they want at the drop of a hat. That's who I call a loser. Because I have absolutely everything I could ever possibly desire. And if I wanted something that I couldn't have, I guarantee you, you can speak again in a few months and I fucking have it. I guarantee you. Because if I want something and I can't have it, I can't sleep. When I was broke, I couldn't sleep. I don't know how there's broke people out here sleeping just fine at night. Going, oh, you know, inflation's 
gas prices are six times, everything on the news is a lie, I never stand a chance of ever getting rich, where's my pillow? Like, what the, f what the fuck is wrong with you people? I, I go to bed at night as a teenager and think, I looked it up on the internet. It was a Honda Civic Type R. I wanted one, it was like 38,000 pounds. I had no money, I had less than 50 pounds on my bank account. Couldn't afford it. Then I looked up how much a Ferrari cost, 210,000 pounds. And I said to Tristan, my cup brother, I was like, there are people with 210,000 pounds for a car. And he's like, yes, so? I'm like, no, no, not so. How? If I worked my job for six years, and saved every penny. If I walked to work and didn't eat, I couldn't buy this car. How are people doing this? I couldn't sleep at night when I was broke. I knew that everything was a lie. I knew the matrix was lying to me. I knew I had to find a way out. I was sitting there going, I refuse to live my human years and be some second class citizen peasant when there's people out here who get to do whatever the fuck they want. I, I couldn't tolerate it. And I was so uncomfortable that it gave me the motivation I needed to escape. But the people who go, oh yeah, nice Ferrari, yeah. Back to the TV. Dummies, losers. And the thing about the world is, we need losers. I, I'm not mad at losers. If that's the reality you've chosen to live, you get one spin in this version of life, and you decide you want to be a loser, that's fantastic because I like, I need, my cars need cleaning, you know? My hotel room needs cleaning. I have a party with all these beautiful women that's a bit of a mess. Please, go pick it up. Somebody needs to do that shit. I ain't gonna fucking do it. If I had to walk into a hotel room and clean up after some other man's party, I guarantee you I'd do whatever it fucking took to become rich so I didn't have to do that shit anymore. You wanna do that for 20 years? Thanks, friend. <laughs> Someone's gotta flip the fucking burgers. Someone has to make the fries. I want a happy meal now and again. But I don't feel sorry for you people because you fucking deserve it because it's a decision you made. You made that decision. If you're sitting at home and you say, I don't want to be a loser, you know what to do. I told you how to escape the matrix. CobraKidTape.com, you can join, I'll teach you. But if you're gonna sit there and go, nah, maybe this guy with hundreds of millions of dollars is trying to scam me out of 25 pounds. All right, smart ass, have fun at McDonald's. Get fucked. I have no sympathy for these people, zero. Do you have a little bit of a system you can share on how to make money. I know we've got CobraTate.com, we'll yeah. keep shouting it out, but any tips for someone who's ready, yeah. but they don't yet know the how? Completely. So we teach it inside of the real world, of course. I keep mentioning it because it's so important, but there are three keys, I believe, to making money. The word of the day. First one's perspicacity. Most people go through life and they do not pay attention. I've said this before and I want to stick by it because it's so important. You need to pay attention to every single time you spend money because you cannot make money. You're not the Federal Reserve, you're not a government. Governments make money. All of us take money from somebody else or a business or a government. We take money from other things. So the easiest way to learn how to get good at taking money is to pay attention to every time someone takes money from you. So next time you buy a coffee, don't just buy the coffee and drink it and think nothing of it like every brokey. Don't do that. Say, okay, I, why am I buying this coffee? Okay, I want the coffee. All right, why am, I, why am I buying here? Well, this is on my way to work. Is there any competition around? Do I also want breakfast? Do they sell breakfast? No, they don't sell breakfast. They can probably make some more money if they're selling breakfast. Anyway, I walk in, there's a long line. Why is there one member of staff? I'm low on time. I'm about to leave and not buy the coffee. They're about to lose money because it's taking too long. Most of the people in this line are businessmen. Why is there not a cute girl behind the counter? I bet if they paid a cute girl a little bit more, they'd still make a bunch more money because people come in here to talk to her. Think. And then you, what you'll do is, as you go through life, every time you spend money, is you'll realize the problem is not how to make money. The problem is how much time you have because there's endless business ideas. There's endless ideas. I walk into a coffee shop and by the time I've walked out, I already know exactly how to open up next door and outcompete them head to toe. I already have worked out how much is the rent, how, where are they fucking up, what are they not selling that they should be selling? What are they doing good? What are they doing bad? This chair is too hard. I'll wreck them. And I'll send it, and now my network is so powerful, which is the second point network, I can send a few messages on WhatsApp and make a bank transfer. And two months later, there's a brand new coffee shop next door with my name on it, put them out, put them out of business. So the first thing is you have to pay attention. Because if you pay attention, you'll start to learn that the money is everywhere. Every building is owned. These are skyscrapers. Billion, 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 billions. Every apartment nowadays is a million. 
million, million. You drive down a street in London, you're driving past trillions of dollars. There's money everywhere. It's all around us. When I was broke, I thought that the world was broke. I thought that there was no money. And then I got rich and realized that I was completely and utterly wrong. There's so much money. It's everywhere. If I go to try and buy a plane or a jet, they're always sold out. My yacht is a fucking six year waiting list. I want a Bugatti, they launch it, the email comes to my email address, two minutes later, gone. Like, there's so much money. If I want a diamond watch, or a million dollar watch, or a million dollar Rolex, you can't get this stuff. There is so much money out there. Once you get to a certain echelon, you realize there's money fucking everywhere. So there's plenty of money in the world. People with no money are just not very good at taking it. So you need to start paying attention. It's the first thing. Second thing is network. It's hard to make money if you don't know anybody who has money. If you sit in a room full of ice cream experts and all they talk about is ice cream, how to make ice cream, the different flavors, how to store it, how to move it, how to sell it, even by accident, if you hang around with these people long enough, when someone asks you a question about ice cream, that's what you're gonna, you're gonna know the answer. You're gonna say, you know what? That's because it's pistachio and that needs to be two degrees higher than chocolate. And you're gonna look a smart ass. So if you sit in a room full of people who are making a bunch of money, Everyone understands this. Your network is your network. You are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everybody understands this. And then they still hang around with fucking losers. Because they're dummies. You're right. I am the sum of the five people I spend the most time with. Anyway, this is my friend Nick. He's so funny when we go drinking because he gets really drunk. <laughs> losers. I don't talk to anybody who is not winning. Everybody whose phone, uh, every phone call I will answer, if I answer a phone call, it is from a winner. I don't talk to losers. Everyone I talk to is rich. Everyone I talk to is making money. Everybody. If my entire reality is full of multimillionaires making money, how am I not gonna make money? And this is why network is so important is because it's the same reason that wolves hunt in packs. If you're a lone animal, you have one set of eyes. But if you're a pack, you're watching every single angle, every single side. Perhaps I might miss something. I'm as perspicacious as possible. But one of my friends identifies that the war in Ukraine is gonna change and the Russian ruble is going to pump. You can make a bunch of money on a forex trade, for example. I may not have noticed, but he'll notice. Now I've made a bunch of million dollars for getting a text message, right? Hmm. Because I have friends who are paying attention. All of us are paying attention. So your network is super important. That's another thing. We'll go into this because I have something called the War Room, which is also on corporatetech.com. I let people read for themselves. But that's my private network. And we specifically talk about money and, and a few other things. But that's is that like more like a mastermind? It's it's the real world's how to make money and the war rooms what to do with money. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's all on corporate.com. I don't want to get off track, but it's there. But second is network. And third is to identify the reason why you don't have as much money as you want so far. And there's one of three reasons. You are either lazy, stupid, or arrogant. Those are the only three reasons anyone is poor. And you have to identify and choose which one it is. The majority of people are not the one they think they are. The majority of people are the one I'm about to say at the end. So let's start with lazy. There are a lot of lazy people. The unfortunate reality about money is that you are competing. So it's player versus player. It's like anything in the world. If you want that beautiful girl, so does everyone else. You have to win the competition. You want that car, you have to get it first. You want that money, everyone wants that money. You have to compete. It's competitive, business is competitive. You are competing against people like me. You're competing against people like the people in my network. You're competing about people who only talk about money, who understand money very well, who operate in jurisdictions all around the planet, who are extremely well connected, who know things before you know them, who have mass influence and mass power and mass resource. You're competing against me. This is what you must understand. You're not waking up going, I want to make some money. You're competing against people like me. You're competing against billionaires. You're competing against hedge funds. How do these hedge funds keep growing? Where are they getting that money from? From the brokies. They're robbing you. They're robbing all the poor people from the pension fund, dummy. That's where they get it from. This is who you're competing against. So the competition is absolutely and utterly fierce. Understanding that, understanding that you're a man with a small pistol up against a mighty army. If you want to add a little bit of laziness on top, you're fucked. So when I say people are lazy, they go, I'm not lazy. I work hard every day. You work eight hours a day? You work eight? Eight? The fuck? If I'm awake, I'm working. I'll be driving my Bugatti Chiron through Dubai, working. I'm texting at the same fucking time. I don't take a second off. I don't take a minute off. I don't relax. I don't rest. I don't stop. 
I don't chill, none, ever. I'm either asleep or at work, that's it. Second I wake up, I check my phone, I begin working. I go to the gym, in between sets I am working. I'm online working the entire fucking day until the second I go to sleep, I am at work. That is all I do. And you are at home competing against me and you want to watch a movie tonight and then say you're not lazy. You're fucking lazy and you're gonna lose forever. That's laziness. Next is stupid. I don't think many people are actually too stupid to be rich. You can be below average IQ and still get very rich. Very, a very small percentage of people are too dumb to be rich. The slave minds, they'll never be rich because the matrix tries to keep you poor because when you're poor, you can't think, as we talked about earlier. So everything the media tells you is designed to make you poor. They want you broke and struggling because if you rely on the government for food stamps, then you can't argue with the government, can you? So that's what they want. So anyone who believes in the matrix and believes in media and believes in the lies they're told, anyone who sits there and goes, that's true, that it's literally designed to make you broke. That's why it's all a scam. Do your GCSEs, do your A-levels, get in debt, go to uni, get out, get a shit job, get a mortgage. Don't worry, when you've paid that mortgage off when you're 61, then you'll have enough money to go to Spain for holiday. Then your pension comes. Oh, government doesn't have the pension money anymore. Funny enough, hedge fund stole it. Pay half your money in your life in tax. Oops, de doops. <laughs> and then you wake up one day and go, whoa, I just got fucked. So the whole scam, the whole story is a lie because they want you broke. <laughs> they don't want you rich. If you're rich, you won't listen to them. So all of it's a fucking lie. And intrinsically, we all know this, right? If I, when I pull up in one of my 30 cars to a gas station and people look at me and they see a Lambo or a Ferrari or a Bugatti or a Koenigsegg, whatever I'm driving, nobody goes, wow, he went to school. No, they think drug dealer, gangster, they're thinking, they're thinking he broke the rules because anyone who follows the rules doesn't get shit. It's all a scam. It's all a fucking lie. So the slave minds are fucked, but those are the only ones who are too stupid to make money. Anybody who understands that the Matrix is lying to them is smart enough. So very few, very small percent are too stupid. Inside of our school, at the height of it, before the Matrix attack, we're relaunching now. We had 175,000 students. Wow. When we had 175,000 students maybe 2,000 we kicked out for being too stupid. It's step by step. Do this, do that, do this, and don't be lazy. The fuck, it's not that hard, right? So stupid's not the problem. So we have people who are lazy, very few are stupid, but the majority, the main reason most people are broke is because they are arrogant. I will sit here and say all the things I've said. I will do this, take time out of my life for free. Somebody at home will watch and digest it for free. They will agree with the things that are being said or at least be entertained enough to continue to watch. And then I'll say, I'll teach you how to make money online. CobraTake.com, you can join the real world. And they'll sit there and go, nah, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. They have these egos from fuck knows where because they didn't earn it. And they're just too arrogant to listen to anybody. I became world champion by listening to my coach. I didn't become world champion by walking in and saying, I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's not how you get anywhere in life. You have to listen. If, if Mike Tyson were to walk in, or if Elon Musk were to walk in here and talk to me about money, I wouldn't be sitting there going, I can do that. I'd be like, oh, Mr. Elon, richest man in the world. Hello, very nice to meet you. Please, even though I already understand I don't want to launch a car brand or put rockets in space, please, you must know some things I don't know. How do you deal with the currency fluctuations? Does it does does inflation impact how much it costs for you to send a rocket into space? Like, oh, I'll ask him something that's useful, right? But some people, some people are so brutally arrogant that they'll sit here and they'll listen to all the things I said, and they'll agree that I'm intelligent, they'll agree I'm massively successful, but they'll sit there and go, yeah, but you know what? I'll, I'll do it myself. I don't want to join that school because, you know, I'll, just do, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. Everybody's fucking arrogant. I sit with people who I used to go to school with from Luton who are still broke and tell them how to make money. And you know what they do? They answer back. Yeah, but you know, it's not that simple because you know, the wife gets the kid, da, 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 and you know what, and I, I don't like to do things that way, the way I like to work. The way you like to work is why you're fucking broke. So what the fuck are you talking about? You just sat here and wasted 10 minutes of my time. I told you how to take your business, or painting and decorating, or whatever the fuck you're doing, and make a serious amount of money, and now you're telling me the way you like to work? Then stay fucking broke. The fuck you want me to do? What level of arrogance? But this is people. They'll sit with a multi-millionaire and tell you their view. Oh, I think that the... Know when you're out qualified. 
and accept it and learn. So we all do. I'm not gonna get, a, I can't play piano for shit. The piano teacher walked in here and said, this is what you do. And I said, well, I like to move my hands this way. What kind of dumbass? But this is the, this is the arrogance people operate under. So I'd say 20% of people are lazy, 20 to 25%. A large portion of the world are not lazy. They're actually working exceptionally hard, but they're doing the wrong thing. 5% of people are too stupid. So say 25%, 5% is 30%. But 70% of people are brutally arrogant, and this is why they are poor. That's the truth.